Thank you for joining us here at Legacy Church Online. Our prayer is that you were inspired by the message and that you were encouraged today. If you'd like to help continue to give financially, you can do so on the website, or many others have even dropped it off here at the church. We appreciate your generosity. We appreciate everything that you're doing. We would lo also love for you to connect with us. Connect with us on Facebook. Connect with us on Instagram. Go to our website. Send us an email. However you can get connected with us, we want to stay connected with you. We love you. We thank you. And we cannot wait to meet with you in person again. God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, let's stand and let's worship together.
beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation, and now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, and nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Did it want ever Without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. But what could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name. together death could not who well, death could not hold you the veil tore before you your silence supposed of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you
peace like a river wash over me immerse me in water as deep as the sea oh, hide me in love your healing embrace peace like a river wash over me as I worship your majesty I worship your holy name Jesus my everything all that I am is
break out. Oh, come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Oh, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Oh, come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would come on, reach up. Let's do it again. Come on, Lord. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit, heaven break out. Oh, come now in power, cover this land. Like you've done it before, would you do it again? Revival, come on, ask him today. God, put revival in my heart. Put revival in my home. Put revival into my spirit. Come on, say that to him. Lord, send revival. Come on, say it within yourself. Say it within your home right now. Surrender everything. I was thinking how that song was talking about. God, I've surrendered everything unto you today, God. Surrendered everything unto you today, Father God. When you have that kind of surrender, you've got that kind of passion before the Lord. Revival is just a, it's just a, it's just a part of who you are. It's just the residue of who you are. And it's what God is doing in your heart and what God is doing in your life. It's just everywhere that you walk and in everything that you do, you're, you're walking in that presence and in that power and in that spirit. It's almost like the angels. The Bible says that around, uh, around God's throne, that these angels, they, they fly around this day and night, day and night, all day, every moment of every hour of every day, and they cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. That's what the scriptures declare. And I believe every time that they fly around the throne of God, I believe that they say, God, we see your holiness. You are holy. I believe they fly around the throne of God and they see another attribute of God. They say, God, I see your forgiveness. God, I see your mercy. I see your grace. And they just continue to fly around singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And that's that spirit of revival. You know, Pastor Mike Dyer and I, and, and, and I'm going to talk about this in just a moment, but Pastor Mike Dyer and I from the River Church, we've been encouraging each other and building each other up. And the Bible talks about this. It talks about that one could put a thousand demons to flight. One prayer, what the, the prayer of one person. But two people get together and all of a sudden God begins to wreck a city. God begins to meet the needs and the hearts and the lives of people because two or three gather together in the name of Jesus. The Bible says nothing shall be impossible unto them that believe. And so I'm in, I'm, I may be old school. I may just believe what it is the word of God is saying unto me but I'm going to walk in that presence. I'm going to walk in that power. Sing it again one more time. Lord, send revival. I challenge you. I dare you to say, God, send revival to my heart. Send revival to my home. Send revival to my city. Send revival to this nation, to this world. I challenge you to declare it over your life right now. Come on. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. Move of your spirit. Heaven break out. Oh, come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Oh, Lord, send a revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit, heaven break out. Oh, come now in power and cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Would you do it again? Hallelujah. Would you do it again, Father God, in our hearts and our lives, God? Right now, God, right now, right now. We bless you today. Can we give him a hand clap of praise this morning? We thank you today, God, for your Holy Spirit, God. Hallelujah. I don't want to just get together and just have another church service. Come on, somebody. Amen. I need God to move in my heart. I need God to move in my life. I need restoration. I need resurrection. Come on, somebody. Amen. Praise God. Uh, you can be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. We're grateful that you're here. Thank you for braving, uh, braving the smoky weather. 
Again, we're, we're so appreciative of you. Last week, man, I was praying so hard, and I said, God, just give us, just give us two or three hours. Just give us a couple of hours there in the morning, and uh, once we get done with, with church service, man, let the smoke roll in, and I'm telling you, my nephew was watching the air quality because he's, he's like that, and he's just watching the air quality, and he's like, hey, it's, it's this, and it's that, and, and right about 1130, it went up to 105, and he said, unhealthy, it's unhealthy, it's unhealthy, and so uh, he, he was telling me about it, so I was grateful to see that. That, uh, that God blessed us last weekend, and uh, so I believe that God could keep us, uh, uh, give us long life, even in even breathing in the smoke. Come on, somebody, amen, and uh, I know that he can. I know that he can. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for, for being here this morning. We're, we're so glad that you're here. We want to give you an opportunity to give this morning as giving unto the Lord. Thank you for giving online. We appreciate you and uh, so very much, and, and uh, your commitment to Legacy Church, your commitment to the purposes of God, and we're so grateful that you're giving. We're so grateful that you're engaged, and we know that God is going to minister unto your heart and minister unto your life. Will you pray with us this morning? God, I thank you today, Father, God, for the responsibility that you have given unto us, God, to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, among every tribe, nation, tongue, and people group. I ask you today, God, Lord, to move powerfully today, God, to touch every heart, touch every life, God. God, as we give, God, with expectancy today, Father, we give today, Father, with purpose. We give today, God, knowing that you're going to meet every need in our hearts and every need in our lives. We're going to give you glory, honor, and praise today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, God bless you as you give. There's some I'll be able to preach to you this morning. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. We've been in a series entitled, uh, entitled If. And this morning, I want to talk to you about if God cares. Say that to your neighbor, all right? Don't spit on them. Maybe you might have to whisper it, okay? Be COVID-free about it, okay? But say, if God cares. Pastor Mike, it's tough to be COVID-free throwing that F out there, throwing the F. It's, it's, it's a lot more spittle uh, than, than what I'm used to. If God cares. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, the Bible says it like this. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than Pastor Harlan boots? Okay, more than clothing. Isn't my body more than clothing, Scripture says, right? Look at the birds. Somebody say, look at the birds. This is so powerful. I'm getting ready to encourage you in the Lord this morning. The Bible says birds don't plant, birds don't harvest, birds don't store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Or scripture even talks about, can it add height to your life? Can it can it add height where you have a greater perspective, a greater outlook? Can it even add a, a, an inch to your life? No, it cannot. Amen. Verse 28. And why worry about your clothing? Look at why. Uh, excuse me. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing, yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. Verse 30, and if God cares, if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Somebody say a good amen. Amen. So a couple of quick things that we're going to talk about this morning. Number one, when you're anxious, when you're afraid, remember these things. You don't have to have it all figured out. Amen. Number two, God knew that you would be afraid. And number three, sometimes we pray for the wrong things. Amen. So point number one, you don't have to have it all figured out. You you, you ever know people like that? My, my, my son, my oldest son and my wife, they're planners. I, I love them because they're planners. But guess what? 
God, I've got scripture to back it up. You don't have to have it all figured out. Sometimes you can fly by the seat of your pants. Come on, somebody. Amen. You can just kind of roll with it. You know, when a movie character is in a situation that requires courage, it looks great. I mean, it's so exciting. Everybody's going to win. You know the end of the story. You're like, man, everybody's going to win. Everybody's going to smile. Everybody's going to be so happy because courage is fun to watch other people have. Amen. But in real life, bravery feels a lot like complaining. You ever notice that? You, You do something brave and people just complain at you. You do, something, you, you do something brave and people just criticize you. You do something brave and people just cry and they whine at you. Amen. But when you're walking in a courageous moment or a situation, you can experience being nervous, wanting to vomit, and not sleeping well. Somebody say a good amen right there. That's what it feels like. That's what courage feels like. And the problem is that we think the arrival of fear is failure, as if it's not okay to be afraid. It's not okay to be afraid, we say. So we tell our kids, we say, hey, what are you going to do when you grow up? And we challenge our kids, and we ask them, junior high and senior high and, you know, all, all, the, all, the, all the highs, right? All, all the lows and all, all the college. What are you going to do when you grow up? We put this pressure on them. And I, I want to say this. Listen, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I know the one who does. Come on, somebody. I know that God has a plan. I know that God is able. So I ask you the question this morning. Who's important? People or God? People or God? Well, the answer, the answer would be both. And this is so good right here. We do ministry for people, but we do ministry with God. We can't do it without him. This is all about him. Somebody say a good amen. We all get wrapped up in worrying more about what we are doing rather than who we're doing it for. <laughs> I just said something real good to you right there. I get worried sometimes about all the things that I'm doing, all the things that I'm doing instead of worrying about who I'm doing them for. And in verse 25 in Matthew chapter Matthew chapter 6, the Bible tells us for many of us, this advice not to worry about your life sounds just as impossible to obey as don't breathe. Hey, do me a favor, don't breathe. Hey, you're going to be out in, outside in the smoke for a long period of time. Let me give you some encouragement. Don't breathe, right? It, it's, it's just ridiculous to say that. Don't worry. Amen. It's ridiculous. Amen. Verse 26. Verse 26. Listen to this. Birds don't worry about where they're going to get their next meal. They don't worry about that. Now listen to me. They have to hunt for their next meal. They got to work for their next meal. Amen. They got to dig the, you know, dig the earth up and find, you know, uh, find a worm or, or whatever that it is, right? They've got to do that. Yet their heavenly Father feeds them. And Jesus is saying to each and every one of us, in effect, when was the last time you saw a bird with an ulcer? When was the last time you saw a bird stressed out, just frustrated? I don't know what I'm going to do about tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to do about this situation. Come on, somebody. God is teaching us something here. The next thing, verse 28, 29, flowers don't agonize over looking pretty. They don't wake up in the morning and and they're like, man, I've got to make sure to get all my nutrients. I've got to make sure to hit that protein shake. I've got to go ahead and put in uh, 100 push-ups so I look sharp today. Amen. It doesn't work that way. But Scripture says even Solomon, the wisest, one of the richest men in all of the Bible, in all of his splendor could match the beauty in the fields of God's creation. Amen. Flowers aren't stressed about looking good. Amen. Flowers aren't anxious or overwhelmed about looking a certain way or delivering a specific something. That's a human weakness. That's a human fear. Come on, somebody. You know I'm right. You can say amen. That's a good place right there. Amen. According to CNN Health, humans are only born with two, uh, two fears. The fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Everything else is a learned or an experienced fear. So the fear of rejection that you feel at times, you need to get under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say a good amen right there. Well, I don't know that I fit the bill. I don't know that I fit in their club. I don't know if I do all these things. You know what? God doesn't need you in that club. Amen. I don't have to fit in that club, praise God. Verse 30. If God 
gives this kind of attention of provision to birds and flowers, won't he do much more for you? Listen, I'm just as guilty. I wonder what we're going to, I, what, how are we going to, what are we going to do at this time? I'm just as guilty. Come on, somebody. I don't even have to finish my sentence sometime. I can be stressed out. Amen? What do, man, I don't know. Right? You just kind of get stressed out. We have this tendency to want to know what's going to happen next. That's not how faith works. Moses didn't get spoken to, read it in the scriptures. He didn't get spoken to about his purpose, about what God was going to do in his life until he took his shoes off standing there at holy ground. That's, God said, hey, you take your shoes off. I, he was like, there's a burning bush. There's a bush that's there out in the wilderness, and it's not, it's not being destroyed. It's not catching, else, catching anything else on fire. I've got to go see about this bush. Moses shows up to the bush, and the bush speaks to him. And God said, hey, i got to tell you something about your future. But he doesn't get spoken to until, to, to until he takes his shoes off. Noah, he had to build the boat to save his family. Amen. He could have sat there and talked about it. God's going to send a flood. God's going to wipe out everything over the, over the face of the earth. What am I going to do? Build the boat. That's what he's going to do. Amen. Joseph had to take Mary as his wife, who was pregnant, or she had conceived of the Holy Spirit, amen, and he had to name the baby Jesus. He had to walk in step. Abraham left his homeland in search of God's promise and inheritance to a place he didn't know how to get to. Each and every one of these people, each and every one of these men and women had to take a step without knowing what was next. That's how faith works. Amen. You'll never know where God is taking you unless you're first willing to leave where you are. A lot of people don't want to leave where they are. This is good enough. And they live in the land of good enough. They live in the land of just enough. They live in the land of, well, we, we've got a little bit more than enough, and they stay happy with that. Come on, somebody. God wants to do miracles and signs in your life. And God takes you places that you can't plan. Amen. And for our lives, that's the way faith works. For our lives, for our careers, our relationships, our kids, and our calling from God. I have a lot of people, they say, Pastor Mike, I'm ready to step into my call of God. Let me ask you the question. Have you taken off your shoes in the holy ground yet? Have you allowed God to deal with the you? Have you allowed God to deal with the sin in your heart, the spirit of negativity or the spirit of criticism that lives on the inside of you? Because until you get that dealt with, come on, somebody, you're just going to continue to wonder, what is God going to do with me? Amen. And I want to encourage you uh, to step out in, in, the, in that area of faith because adventures don't come with details. Errands do. And you were created for more than errands. Come on, somebody. Point number two. God knew that you would be afraid. God already knew that you would walk in that. And the most repeated phrase in the Bible is do not be afraid. It's not don't do this certain thing. That's what a lot of people, they, they think that the Bible's just full of all those things. Don't do all these rules. Don't do all these things. That's not what the Bible's full of. The Bible's full of encouragement. The Bible's full of promises. Come on, somebody. And one of them says, do not be afraid. And if you suffer or are currently suffering from fear and or anxiety, you need to know the most repeated advice in the Bible. Do not be afraid. That's a good word right there. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, the Bible says, So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. Listen, God's not going to walk out on you. I don't know what it is that you may have experienced in your past, but God's not going to fail you. He's not going to walk out on you. He's not going to leave you like others may have left you. Come on, somebody. It's not how God works. It's not how God operates. And if you're wondering... Why God has to tell his people so many times in Scripture to be strong and courageous is because he knew the human tendency to be afraid and discouraged, especially when facing giants. <laughs> you may be facing a giant today. 
the giant of financial stress, the giant of uh, the situation that's going on in your marriage, the giant of school. What are they going to do with school? They keep charging me, but I feel like no one's teaching me. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, the, the, the giant of that situation, man, they, they keep telling me at my work that they may lay us off. They don't know what they're going to do. And my favorite instance about fear is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 26, talking about birds. What a gift that it is that God chose a bird. There's over, there's between, according to the animal planet, there's between 200 and 400 million birds on the planet, and everybody has seen one. If you're sitting under the sound of my voice and you have never seen a bird, can you raise your hand? Steven, is that you, man? He's got his hand up. No, he ducks it back in the car. No, just kidding. He was just giving me an amen out there. You've seen a bird. You've witnessed a bird. Everybody's seen one. So we have thousands of reminders of God's grace and God's provision. Every time you see a bird, it, it flies in. It may be sitting on a perch. You have thousands of reminders. God's got you because God's got the bird. Amen. And God cares more about the birds. He cares about the lilies of the field. He cares about the flowers. Doesn't he care so much more for you? Amen. That's what Scripture's teaching us uh, about that. Every time, you should be reminded of your extreme value. You should be reminded that God is your source and that God is your provider. Hallelujah. In verse 31, it says, don't worry about life's needs. After all, idolaters or unbelievers seek after these things and they become anxious. That, that defines them. That should not define the life of a believer. Love ought to define us. Amen. Faith ought to define us. People who are idolaters, people who are unbelievers, they're pleading out there with their false gods looking for some kind of help. But you have a heavenly Father, the true and living God, who knows exactly what you need. Why don't you call upon him and ask him for some guidance? Ask him for some direction. Ask him for some healing. Come on, somebody, give me an amen. It's not wrong to plan and work hard. We should do these things. But our error happens when we remove God from the equation or we fail to give him priority. So Pastor Mike, verse 33, what then is the antidote for worry? What's the antidote for worrying? You ready for it? Seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. And if you get that right, everything else falls into place. Everything else, listen to me, everything else, that's Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Everything else will begin to fall into place. You seek first God's kingdom, you seek his righteousness or your right living before him, God will take care of all the other things. Come on, somebody. Scripture did not promise that everything would be perfect, right? It's not the Lego movie. Everything is awesome. Everything is great when you're part of the team. Everything is awesome. No, everything's not awesome. Come on, somebody. It's a good song, and it rhymes well, and it's in my head, and I can't get rid of it. It's been blocked from our grandkids' viewing. Come on, somebody. No more watching the Lego movie. Because I cruise around cutting grass going, everything is awesome. Every yeah, it's what I do, okay? But there's going to be difficulty. There's going to be hardship. There's going to be frustration. Come on, smile at me. There's going to be frustration. There's going to be ridicule. There's going to be persecution. But in all things, we are to rejoice in the Lord always. And Scripture says, and again, I say rejoice. Because God demands that his kingdom rule be first in your life. And when it's missing, listen to me, when it's missing, you've identified the key to all of your problems. Pastor Mike, I've, I've put God out of order. i put all these other things out of order. Look at me. Then just like the vending machine that you walk up to says out of order on it, you can put money in it. It's not going to give you anything, but it's just going to keep taking your money. Your life's out of order. Your spirit is out of order. And you've got to get it into check. You've got to put yourself back into play. Come on, somebody. Righteousness is the standard that God requires in order for his people to rightly relate to him. And so to seek his kingdom 
is to seek to live in accordance with his standards, with his guidelines, and with his promises. And because of all those things, the faithfulness of God, the purpose of God, but the Bible says that goodness and mercy will track you down. It will hunt you down all the days of your life. Hallelujah. And of course, prioritizing God's kingdom in this way doesn't mean that you won't experience challenges, even suffering, but your life will be aligned under his kingdom authority, so therefore you qualify and you can experience his provision. Let me say it to you like this. In baseball, you could step on second base, you could step on third base, you could step on home plate without being tagged. But if you missed first base on the way, nothing else matters. Amen. That's the qualifier. First base. Amen. The righteousness of God. You, you miss first base, you're out. God cannot, God will not play second. Smile at me. Go ahead. It's okay. My pastor used to say this, smile at me, show me your teeth. Don't take them out, just smile at me, show me your teeth. How do you know if you're putting God's kingdom first? Well, you've got to ask yourself this question. When I need guidance to make decisions, where do I go first? A lot of people, God is their spare tire. He's where they run when all else fails. So do you seek God's perspective first through his word and through godly counsel, or do you seek the world's perspective? I'm not telling you as you're putting your pool together to ask the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you to go on to YouTube. Come on, somebody. Amen? But when the rubber meets the road and you're challenged by situations and circumstances in your own heart and in your own life and you're like man what do I need to do I'm telling you don't go to Facebook for your counsel amen go to the word of God seek his word seek his counsel seek his guidance seek his direction seek his healing and his promises his goodness and mercy are going to follow you all the days of your life hallelujah align yourself with God's agenda and your Father will take responsibility for meeting all of your needs. Amen. And finally, point number three. Sometimes we pray for the wrong things. You ever pray for the wrong things? Only two of us. God bless you. Thank you for being honest. Oh, okay, there's a few more of us. A few, you know, a few half, you know, some of you half masters. That's, that was me. Oh, he's talking to me. Yeah, you know, just kind of. You know, those auction people. Just give you the head. That's me. That's me. We pray for the wrong things. Last week we asked the question, what if all the circumstances that you're asking God to change are the very circumstances God is using to change you? And I'm walking in that, and God is changing me, and I don't like it. Come on, somebody. People say, they, they say people like change. That's not true. I hate change. You know what? You know who likes change? Babies. Babies like changed. They like to be changed. Amen? Verse 34 says, take care of today's concerns and don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. So focusing on living for God's kingdom today is the antidote to worry. Many times success in one area of your life or ministry causes us to wrap our identity up into certain things. I was, I remember this, I, I, I felt like I was a good youth pastor, I, I really did, I, man, I, I felt like, I, dude, if, if there's a good youth pastor on the face of the planet, I'm it, I'm telling you, I know that God has used me, God's called me to student ministry, man, we were pouring our lives into teenagers and ministering under them and, and, and ministering under their hearts, amen, and I thought, no way can we fail because I'm going to work hard. And if things start taking a little dip, I'm going to work harder even yet. Come on, somebody, if you know what I'm saying. And I've had the Holy Spirit literally say to me, it's interesting that when you face fear, I'm not one of your options for help. Wow, that hurt. That hurt me. I was like, God, but you know I trust you. Yeah, but you didn't ask me. You didn't call upon me. You know, I mean, it's like doing something ridiculous as a parent. You know, your, your kids do something ridiculous. And you're like, why would you not call me? Why did you do this ridiculousness, right? 
God feels the same way. Why wouldn't you call upon me? When you need help, why wouldn't you call upon me when you needed instruction? I was like, wow, in the face of fear, I was relying on my own strength. Well, God doesn't need us to add our gifts, our talents, or our ideas to, com- to complete him or to compliment him. He's God all by himself. Come on, somebody. God doesn't need the Supreme Court. He doesn't need the UN. He doesn't need the world's globe. He doesn't need the world's ideas on how to run the world. Amen. He's God. He needs us, his people, to call upon him and say, Father, we've sinned and we need some help here. Father, we've sinned and we need some instruction here. And God includes us because he cares, because he loves us. I've made the mistake, I shared that with you, of thinking that I was the reason for different areas of success that TK and I have had or experienced before. Or that TK was the area, she was the reason of success. Not that it was God's hand upon us and it was the team of people around us. Come on, somebody. It's that team that says, what can we do? How do we get engaged? How do we serve? How do we build our city? How do we strengthen those around and about us? And sometimes you take that leap of faith and you think the scary part is over. But the scary part just started. Sometimes you close your eyes, you know. Tell me when it's over, bro. Let me know when it's over, please. Somebody call me, text me, email me, anything. send a homing pigeon. Let me know when it's over, praise God. Then you realize the scary part's just begun. You feel the call of God, you feel the purpose of God, and doubt sets in. Discouragement shows up. Division will call you, and he'll remind you that he's present right around the corner. Hey, when you think you're going good, just wait. I'm going to break it all up. I'm going to make somebody angry. I'm going to frustrate you, praise God. And we play the if God cares card. Well, if God cared, I wouldn't be dealing with this. If God cared, this wouldn't be on my plate, amen? And sometimes you think you're the only one who's struggling with fear. But think about it like this. I found something so powerful, Josh. This is so great. God loves you too much to take away all your fears. Watch this. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. The Bible says, and now, O Lord, hear their threats and give us your servants great boldness in preaching your word. Stretch out your hand with healing power. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After this prayer, somebody say after that prayer. The meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. They were just sitting in jail because God had healed a man lame from birth. And the, and the disciples come out and they tell all the other disciples of Christ, hey man, we were just sitting in jail, here's what happened. And they said, you know what? We're gonna pray God for boldness. We don't care if we've gotta sit in jail. I don't care if they wanna X me up. I don't care if they're trying to shut down the churches. Come on, somebody. They didn't ask for safety, they asked for boldness. They didn't ask for stability, they asked for boldness. They didn't ask for wisdom, they asked for boldness. They didn't ask for direction, they asked for boldness boldness. We need a church full of people ready to ask God for some boldness in their heart, some boldness in their community, some boldness in their careers. Hallelujah. And God, they didn't ask God to quiet the threats. God, quiet the threats. Shut down the enemy. Rather, they wanted even more confidence to speak in Jesus' name. And the Bible said, God began to shake the place. He began to fill them with the Holy Spirit by shaking it and ministering unto them. All of those people who were assembled, filled them with the Holy Spirit to speak the word of God boldly. They'd already received the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter two had stated. But a Christian who's indwelt or who's permanently present, the Holy Spirit resides. He lives on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit, you can be filled powerfully again and again and again and again. You can ask for more revival. Come on, somebody. You can ask for more boldness. You can ask for more faith. And you can believe God for all of those things. So we can operate under the control of the Spirit for bold proclamation. Now, boldness in the Greek, watch this. Parahesa. I don't speak Greek, so I know I butchered that word. Please forgive me. Parahesa. 
it denotes a divine enablement that comes to ordinary and unprofessional people exhibiting spiritual power and authority. It also refers to a clear presentation of the gospel. Boldness. Boldness. Para, para, parahisa. Parahisa. This divine enablement. And this is the kind of boldness the church needs. This is the kind of boldness we ought to pray for. This is the kind of boldness that God makes available to you and I even today. Even today. May, may be we should stop praying for less fear and start praying for more boldness. This boldness, this fearless confidence, this para, parahisa is not a human quality, but a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And God has called you to this boldness. He's called you to be bold in your home. He's called you to be bold in your marriage. He's called you to be bold in your faith. Hello? He's called us to this boldness. Will you stand with me this morning? You say, Pastor Mike, I don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I want to say yes to him right here, right now. You may be watching us online and you may say, you know what? I, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. The Bible says that when you call upon the name of God and you believe that Jesus Christ came, born of a virgin, that he died for your sins and he was resurrected from the dead to deliver you and to rescue you, the Bible says when you call upon his name, you can be saved. You could be saved. You could call upon his name right here, right now. That's you calling out unto him. You say, Pastor Mike, I don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I want to know him. I want to say yes to him right now. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice? Pastor, I, I don't know Jesus, and I want to know him right here, right now, this morning. Anybody? Anybody this morning? God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. I want you to pray with me right there where you're standing. Christians, just pray this prayer with us. Pray for those around and about you that God's going to move in their hearts and in their lives. Pray this prayer together. Say, Father, I need you today. I'm grateful for your word and your power. I'm grateful today, God, that I'm going to receive you as my Savior. God, I ask you to be my Lord. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe that you are the Son of God. And I'm grateful for your love and your presence and your power in my heart and in my life. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Thank you today, Father. Heaven's rejoicing, God, right now, Father. All of heaven is rejoicing, God, because people say yes to you, God. God, there's another group of people, God, under the sound of my voice, God, a worrisome group of people, an anxious group of people, God anxious about all the frustrations and all the fears that are surrounding them God but we know you care today God scripture declares that you care scripture teaches us that you care and God we need your peace God we need God no more fear today Father God Lord but trust God no more frustration today God God but we want to know that we could call upon your name God and that you're going to deliver us and heal us and bring us strength and encouragement if you say this morning, Pastor, I've been really anxious this, this day and this hour. I've been walking in fear instead of walking in faith. And today I want to begin to walk in faith in my relationship with God. I want to begin to trust God and trust that He's going to meet, my, meet, meet the needs of my family, meet the needs of my life, meet the needs of my calling and my purpose. If that's you this morning, can I just see your hand? Pastor Mike, I've been out of alignment. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Hands all over the hands all over the property. I challenge you right now, right there where you're standing. I, I, I challenge you to slip up both hands. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. God, I'm so grateful, God. God, for your fearless passion, God, for our hearts and for our lives, God. God, your fearless instruction today, God, that you've given unto each and every one of us, God. We know today, God, Lord, that we've been worried, God. We've been walking, God, in this frame of frustration, God. God, and we know today, Father God, Lord, to receive, God, all that you have for us, we have to leave our current state, God, of unbelief, our current state of not being faithful, God, not being true to the word that you've put in our hearts, that you put in our lives, God. 
We know that you care, God, more than the birds, God, more than the lilies of the field, God, and we're going to step into your purpose and your design and your heart, God. We thank you today, Father, for all that you're doing, God, in our hearts and our lives. We're going to bless you, God. We're going to praise you today, God. Help us be bold in our faith, God. Help us be bold, God, in everywhere that we go and in everything that we do, God, that your kingdom will grow, God, that your love will be that your love will be shared, God, and that faith will be poured out. We're going to thank you for all that you're going to do in Christ's wonderful and powerful name and everybody said amen can we give God one more good hand clap of praise this morning we're going to sing one more time Lord send revival I challenge you to call upon God for him to send revival into your heart into your life into your city and your community we're believing God for a move of his spirit this Saturday night in our homes, in our lives, in our churches. Let's pray. Let's ask him to continue to touch us and strengthen us as only he can. Come on, let's do it tonight. Peace like a river will wash over me. Immerse me in water as deep as the sea. Hide me in love, your healing embrace. Peace like a river. Wash over me.